Hi everyone, this is Nia. Today I'll be doing something a bit different. I'll be making these little clay ducks using air dried clay and resin for a brush holder or a brush rest. I've wanted to make this for so long. I've actually had this idea ever since my Japan trip a few years back and I saw these really cute ceramic knickknacks, one of them being duck chopstick rests and I thought that they would be so cute to use as brush rests instead but when I checked the price it was so expensive because it was handmade so here we are a few years later attempting to make my own. So let's begin. I used this dust paper clay and I first turned a small clump into a round ball. Then once the clay is nice and smooth with no air pockets, I use one finger to thin out one side of the ball to create this coil shape which will become the neck for the duck. So here I want the neck to of course bend upwards but if I just push it with my finger, the clay will become all wrinkly. So. I made a little slash at the back and then I roughen up the clay so when I push it upwards they can somewhat blend into each other and I soften it using this tool. You can also use your fingers. To blend and smooth out the clay together, if the clay is starting to dry off and it's a bit difficult to work with, I always like to use clean water. I would always have a jar just right next to me so I can dip my finger and smooth out the clay. To make the body and the little tail, I like to pinch the body backwards so it becomes a bit longer and I also pinch my finger upwards so I can create this pointy tail which tilt upwards. While doing this, I always want to dip my finger in the water from time to time so I can smooth out the clay. You can see that the connection from the neck and the body sometimes is a little bit rough so I like to go back in with my tool again to smooth it out. It'll always be like this because if you put pressure from the bottom the clay will sort of move and adjust itself so if you want to make the neck tilt a bit more backwards you would always need to smooth it out afterwards. Here you'll see me pinching the front very lightly and that's to just make the front a bit rounder and whenever I'm doing this, I'm going back again to smooth out the connection of the neck to the body. Next, I want to work on the head. You'll see that the neck is a little bit too long for the size of the duck, but that's because I want the extra clay so I can push it downwards and sculpt it to make the duck head. I smooth out the head and use my thumb to pinch it forwards. So now I have extra clay for me to push down and create the beak. Because the beak is super small, I'm just going to use this tool to push downwards and flatten the front part of the face and also to even out the sides. As you guys know, I used to bake but I can't do it anymore because my skin can't really take it. And this is actually a fondant sculpting tool that I don't use anymore so I'm just repurposing it for this. I'm just going to take my time sculpting this area because it's very small so I do want to be quite gentle with my tools. So this is the basic shape for the duck. You can leave it here and paint on the details. But here I'm going to use this pointed round tool to create an indentation for the wings. I'm just pushing it down firmly but gently at the same time so I won't create cracks while doing this. I'm also going to do this for both sides and a small portion on the back of the duck with added lines to create feathers on the wings.
Lastly, I want to create an indentation as the detail of the tail on both sides. So that's pretty much it for the duck. You can create as many as you want. I'm just going to add some extra elements because I like adding tiny little details. So here I'm just flattening out a piece of clay. And here I'm using my silicone rolling pin to create a flat surface. You can also flatten it with your hands, but it won't be as smooth. And what I'm trying to do here is to create like a puddle shape, which is basically any sort of abstract blob. <laughs> so I used this pointy tool and cut some curves out of the edges. Then I want to smooth it out with my fingers. While doing this, I like to flip the clay. This way it doesn't stick to the surface you're sculpting on, in which case I'm using my cutting board here. And whenever I flip, there will be some scratches of some sort, so I'm just going to smooth it out with my fingers and a bit of water. I'm quite happy with the shape here, and what I'm trying to do is to create lines to suggest the movement of water, as if a duck is paddling forward, leaving a water trail. So here I'm just adding wavy lines, sometimes I like to break down the lines too, and I like to push it down a bit so the indentation is clear. Whenever the clay gets a bit rough, I'll clean out and smooth out the lines with a bit of water. And that's it for the puddle of water, I'm just going to leave it to dry with the ducks. The last thing I'm going to make are lily pads. This is completely optional by the way, I just like to add this as extra decoration and I'm going to stick it on to the water. In which case the water itself is also purely for decoration only. But anyway, I started out by creating this flat circle. I flattened it out using my silicone rolling pin and this time instead of shaping it with my tool, I just cut it down into a smaller circle until I like the diameter. I actually made a few of these purely for decoration so I created different sizes too. So once I'm happy with the diameter, I'm just going to use a bit of water to smooth out the sides. And then I'm going to take off like a slice of pizza. And then of course smoothing out the rough edges again. This time though, because there is this very tiny corner, I use this to smooth it out. My favorite part is to create the texture on the lily pads. I use this embossing looking tool to create a round indentation at the center. Then I use the tool for the duck beak to create lines from the center outwards. And I like to also create a border around the lily pad using the same tool. Then I vary the texture of the lines using a sharper tool to add on finer lines. just going to show you another one. You can vary the size, the pressure, the lines and indentation to make all your lily pads look a little bit different. Sometimes I even like to intentionally make the edges a bit uneven for extra texture. Once I'm done with the sculpting, I left them out to dry for around 3 days. This would depend on the condition of where you're at though. It might take a longer or shorter amount of time. But as I'm drying it out, I like to flip them every once in a while to make sure that the bottom also dries out. Before you flip them though, you want to make sure that the top part with the details is nice and dry. So when you do flip them, the side with the detail doesn't flatten out and get distorted. For the ducks, you want to make sure to flip them every once in a while, but I want to make sure that the top portion is completely dry. This way the bottom will flatten out. So just place them the right way up first, then once it completely dries, you can flip them to the side. Unfortunately for a couple of my ducks, I flipped them too early on the side, which is why one side has flattened out. As you can see, it's also a little bit wrinkled. Before it's completely dry though, I forgot to mention one thing which is to poke a needle or like a skewer underneath all the ducks 
That's going to be for me to hold on to as I glaze it later with resin because you have to work really fast and it's actually quite difficult because it flows really fast too so you just want to make sure to cover all the areas at once. Paper clay tend to have more of a rough surface so I'm going to sand it down to smooth it out. This is actually my first time sanding it down because back in high school when I used to sculpt, I would only do big sculptures which doesn't require tiny details. We also properly glazed and fired the sculptures so it always has a nice smooth finish. I did a trial before this one and the dust was not great to inhale. So while sanding it down, I would definitely suggest for you to use a mask and save your nose and throat. At some point, I inhaled so much dust that I tasted paper clay for the rest of the night and it wasn't pleasant. As for the sandpaper, I'm not really sure what grid this is. I just had these lying around because my husband used it for his oboe reed making. Some of them had 220 written on it, so I'm guessing that that's the grid. And it'll be fine to use somewhere around 200 to 220 grit. As I mentioned, you'll gather quite a pile of dust after sanding it down and you would want to make sure that everything is cleaned off and dusted off by using a brush. I'm just using my watercolor brush here. Make sure you also clean out your surface of all the dust, especially before glazing or it might create air pockets later on. If you want, you can also make this using polymer clay or cold porcelain. I'm guessing that it would be much easier to make smooth surfaces and make tiny little details. I've never had experience with polymer clay but I have played with cold porcelain once and it was so nice to work with. You can make really small flower petals and things like that because of the smooth surface. I've made DIY cold porcelain years ago but I can't really remember the recipe and paper clay is easily available to me which is why I decided to use paper clay instead. Before we move on to painting, I just want to show you a way of fixing the dented side of the duck if this happened to you too. So here I'm going to roughen up the surface of the dented area so I can stick on more clay. I added water to the pile of dust that I've gathered to create a clay paste and I use it to stick on the extra clay and then you can just smooth out the rest and let it dry. This dried pretty well but I'm not actually sure of how strong the bond is in the long run, so the resin coating will definitely help to keep it in place. To color these ducks, you can use acrylics. I usually use acrylics, but this time I'm going to use watercolor for the green male ducks, lily pads, and water puddle. I'll also make white ducks later, but I ended up using acrylics. I'll give you the reason why a bit later on though. One of the reasons why I love ceramic paint is that the color tend to have a bit of texture and translucency, something similar to watercolor and this is actually the first time I tried using watercolor on air dried clay with the addition of the resin glaze later is really close to the ceramic look that I was trying to replicate. Let me just go over the color quickly, firstly this is Chinese white by Holbein, Prussian blue by Holbein, gray of gray by Holbein, Hansa yellow medium by Daniel Smith, vermilion by Holbein, Viridian by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Lamp Black by Daniel Smith, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins. So here I'm just going to paint it on using my normal watercolor and my normal watercolor brush. For the color of the head, I use a mix of Viridian with a bit of Burnt Umber because I want the green to be a little bit more muted and dark. However, if you like more of a vibrant and saturated look, you don't have to mix it with burnt umber and just use Viridian instead. For the duck breast, I'm going to make it brown. And in terms of the color mixture, I use burnt umber with a bit of vermilion. I use the addition of vermilion just to brighten the brown a bit further. 
so it doesn't look too muted. While I paint this, I like to leave out a little bit of white in between the brown and the green and I place this in front and also around the top part of the neck. Then I soften the edges using a clean damp brush to create a gradation. Next, I'm painting on the beak. For this, I just use a thick consistency of Hansi Yellow. After that, I'm going to continue on to paint the body. I first use a mix of Hansi Yellow Grey of Grey with a tiny bit of Burnt Umber. The Burnt Umber is optional. I just use it because I find that it can blend the color a bit better as it progresses from the mixture of Burnt Umber and Vermilion. And then towards the back, I just use a mix of Hansi Yellow and Grey of Grey. The color though turned out looking a bit too yellow than what I want it to be, so I'm just going to glaze on more Grey of Grey over the top. This is optional, but I added a touch of lamp black to the burnt umber and vermilion mix to darken the value and I'm only going to place this right at the back of the neck and the front on a small area to increase the contrast and value to the gradation. For the wings, I'm going to use a mix of burnt umber, Hansi yellow and grey of grey, this time with a bit more burnt umber so it looks like a pastel brown color. Then I'm going to add a bit of burnt umber for the tail and soften the blend. Right at the very tip of the tail and also the edges of the wings, I'm going to use lamp black in quite a thick consistency and then I'm going to soften the blend so it gradates to the base color. For a better color transition, I ended up adding more burnt umber to the lamp black so the color in between has more saturation. Here I'm just going to add a bit more of the dark brown mix at the back. This is just to increase the contrast of the brown and the color of the wings. Here I'm just going to increase the brown behind the tail too. So that's it for the color of the duck. I just want to make sure everything's completely dry so I don't end up smudging it everywhere. Then I'm going to add on the eyes just by doing black dots and also the dots on top of the beak. Here I ended up going over the white area using bleed proof white just to make sure it's more of a true white instead of the grey of the clay. And I also added dots to the eyes for a bit of sparkle. Moving on to the lily pads, these are so simple and fun to paint. I'm just going to use a mix of Hansi Yellow Medium with Viridian and a tiny bit of Burnt Umber to mute the color slightly. You can also add other colors if you would like, but I personally like to change up the ratio to create slightly different tones of green. For the center and the outer part of the lily pad, I want to add a darker green. For that, I use a mix of Radian with Burnt Umber and I'm just going to soften the edges and this will make it look a little bit more natural. I'm just going to show you one more as an example of how you can vary the color. For this, I added more Hansi Yellow Medium, so the green becomes a bit more yellow green. Then for the darker tone of green, I still used the exact same mix, but I reduced the yellow and increased the Burnt Umber and Viridian. I'm just going to quickly dry it off with a hair dryer and as you can see, just like usual, watercolor will always fade as it dries so I'm going to glaze on more color. For the water puddle, I'm going to use a mix of Prussian blue and Chinese white to create a soft pastel blue. With this color, I'm just going to paint the whole area, including the sides.
Next, I want to exaggerate the lines and details. For this, I'm going to use the same mix, but I'm going to add more Prussian blue to create a slightly darker blue. Next, I'm going to paint on the white duck. Initially, I just used Blade Proof White to paint the whole duck and add the eyes using lamp black and for the beak I use a mix of vermilion with Hansa yellow medium. I'm not saying that using bleed proof white won't work because it will work out great but you do have to be very thorough with painting every nooks and crannies because the clay itself is this really light gray color so it's quite hard to see which areas have been covered completely and which area hasn't. It may look fine as is but as we glaze later you'll actually see that the resin brings out the color so much that any gray areas that you've missed will be highlighted by the resin. This is why I ended up using acrylics to paint the white ducks because acrylics is a very thick inconsistency and I find that you can see what's covered even by the texture of the surface. For the beak, I ended up using deep yellow and black for the eyes. As for the brand of the acrylic paint, I used Reeves. I opted for this because I just needed to get the filming done by a certain day, but if I were to choose, I would definitely pick using bleed proof white to paint the white ducks to create a smoother surface but it will just take a bit more time and effort to make sure everything is completely covered. As you can see earlier this wasn't too visible but now that it's covered with resin you can see all the gray areas. And here's the duck that I painted using acrylics. It's not too different on camera but in real life the paint does look a little bit thicker underneath the resin. As I mentioned, this is the first time I used resin and what I did was to pour the resin from the top of the dock and wait for the resin to trickle down and then I used my brush to help cover everything all at once. And if it's about to drip down, I use the brush to take off the excess resin and bring it back to the top part of the dock. I keep moving the resin around very gently until I get a good coverage and because this is UV resin, I use this UV light to cure and harden the resin. You can see that the resin also went over my needle a bit, but this is okay. In fact, this helps keep the duck in place so I can move it with ease without being scared of the duck coming off the needle, which did happen to me before and it was just such a mess to get the resin everywhere. This is why you need to be very gentle while doing this and it did take a few tries for me to get used to the pressure of my brush as I'm moving the resin around. I generally use two coats of resin because there's always an area that is a bit thinner than the rest if I only use one coat. And with my brand of light and resin, it took me around three to four minutes of curing before I can touch the ducts and the other elements without the resin feeling too sticky. I also didn't realize that I was using my normal watercolor brush for this and that wasn't a good idea. Please use a scrap brush or something that you don't want to use anymore because it's really hard to clean and I can't really use my brushes to paint anymore because it's now a bit too stiff even after I tried to clean it with alcohol. Saying all this though, there might be a better way of covering um, the ducks and all the other elements with resin so please let me know of tips and tricks in the comments if you've had experience and if I'm doing something wrong because this is just the way that I figured out how to do it. When I was working with resin, I didn't really smell any fumes, however after I left my room and came back in, that's when I start realizing that there's a smell. So I would suggest if you're doing this and it's your first time to keep your room ventilated in case of toxic fumes. For the lily pads and the puddle, you can cover the top and the bottom if you want to make sure that it's a bit more waterproof. I would just go about it separately and wait for one side to cure and dry first so you can flip and glaze the other side. Lastly, if the resin under the duck is a bit too thick like this one, you can just sand it down until the duck can easily stand on its own. You 
can use the duck as is for a brush rest or you can stick it down to the puddle with lily pads for extra decoration. I just basically use the same resin and cure it to stick them down together. I also realized that I placed the duck at the wrong side of the puddle where the water is supposed to flow but oh well, I think it still looks cute either way. You can place two ducks in the water too if you're using multiple brushes as you paint and would like the extra space. And that's pretty much it for this one. It definitely took some effort to make, but I'm so happy with the result. And maybe this is something that you guys can make as a DIY Christmas gift for your artist friends. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!